What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be talking about three wide receiver tips that will always get you open. So these three things are something that you guys can apply to every single aspect of your game. You guys can use this yourself to make sure that you create separation on every single route and every single situation that defense is going to throw at you. So I hope this video gives you guys some value, teaches you a couple new things about just obviously route running and just being able to get open. But also, fellas, if you guys want over an hour and a half's worth of advanced wide receiver training content, check out that very first link in the description for our route running by, but what you'll get access to is a 48 minute long video on how to improve your route running in 10 days. It's a 10 day, two week long schedule where we break down a specific drill plan for you guys, drills on the field, the reason why behind the drill and um, how it's going to get you better. And then a 49 minute long video on 20 different press releases, when to use those releases and drills for each one. So very first link in the description, fellas, to get access to over an hour and a half's worth of wide receiver training content. Let's get started. So the first tip here that will always get you open is you got to understand leverage and got to be able to attack leverage, right? So this isn't maybe the smoothest post corner in the world, especially coming from that post back to the corner, but we're able to get a ton of separation based off of his stem, right? So I got an inside breaking route like I'm running this post. So the goal would be to get this guy to really overcommit on this post route and then go back to the corner. So it's it's obviously an outside shade situation. So as a wide receiver, um, the main goal here is to make everything look the same, right? So if this DB is outside shade, why is he outside shade? This also ties into being able to attack leverage is the first thing we're going to talk about is that he's outside shake because he's got safety help, right? So he's got safety help to the inside. So as a wide receiver, I don't want to just run straight and run to the post because I got a safety right here and then I'm going to have this DB right on my hip. And that's a very tight window for that quarterback. So I want to take this wide stem to move him off that platform so I create this gap from where the safety is and then I got a bigger window for my quarterback to hit this throw. But again, we're running a post corner, but we want to make it look the same. I want to make it look like how I would normally run a post. So you see when he comes off here, he takes that nice wide stem because what's the DB going to do? He's outside shade because he doesn't want to get beat to the outside. So he's going to keep his leverage. If he's going to keep, he's going to drift to the outside or weave to the outside and not let you just run around him because that's his job. His responsibility is force you in. But again, we're trying to create space and we're trying to make it all look the same. So when he breaks back to this post, he really commits and that's what's going to get this DB to jump on it. In this case, because it's a post corner, he probably could have just ran straight and broke it off. But again, want to make the routes look the same. That's why he did this. So when I come off here and I break up to that post, it's so important to get this DB to commit on this route. I got to make sure that I get my eyes. I got to make sure I commit my shoulders, commit my hips, and I stay in stride because where's the DB supposed to be looking at man coverage? Hips, right? So if he sees my hips commit, that's what's going to make him commit. And if I can just get him to shift his weight forward and actually fo and drive on this post, I should be able to get a ton of separation. So again, attack that leverage to widen space. He takes three hard steps to that post and you see how much this DB commits because I commit. So many guys will run this post corner and their shoulders and their hips will already be drifting back out. Or what they'll do is they'll break to the post and they'll take choppy steps. If you guys do both of those things, you're not going to get any separation. We want to be a salesman first to be able to get this DB to drive on this thing. Then I break this thing back off to the corner. So the number one key that's going to get you separation, fellas, is attack a DB's leverage. Try to make all your routes look the exact same. Let's watch the thing full speed one more time. So great job stemming him out to the outside, attacking that leverage, actually selling the post, and then making sure we accelerate out. And then obviously a hell of a catch. All right. So the second tip that we're going to be talking about about fellas is how you can use lanes off the line of scrimmage to create some space. So you want to think of press releases like you're driving. So let's watch this thing full speed. So you see this receiver and he comes off here. He really is able to get some separation off this double up release. So double up release, I want to step in the direction that I'm going first. So if I'm going to work a one, two, I want to step with the left foot first, then step with the right. Cause I'm trying to make him think I'm going to the outside. Now talks about this before you want to think of releases like lanes. So that's the second tip to get you some separation. If a DB is going to move, you got to threaten him in a direction. The DB will not move if you don't threaten him. So what a lot of receivers will do is they'll just take two quick steps inside of DB's frame. That's not going to get him to jump, fellas. It's not going to do anything. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, you don't want to reach out here. Well, yeah, obviously, but if you bring your body with the cut, that's not going to be that's not going to be a huge issue, right? So you see when he comes off here, he hits him with his one, two, and you see how far out wide he is stepping outside this DB's frame, but it's inside of his frame, right? So let's talk about this. Like I said, think of releases is like you're driving. You got the left lane, you got the middle lane, and then you got the far right lane. If I'm trying to go to the inside, if I'm trying to make a lane change to the left, I got to sell like I'm going to the far right lane. So that's where I actually have to step with my right foot. So you see when he steps outside his frame here, that actually threatens him like he's going in this direction. But now 
as all you probably know, a DB is not looking at your feet. So what you have to do when you make this cut and you actually step outside his frame is you got to bring your body. You got to almost throw your hip. That's the terminology that I use. So when you make this first cut, you're quick with the inside move and you're pushing off this inside move and actually selling with your upper half to really throw to the outside. And when I could throw to the outside like this and actually step outside of his frame, this is a balanced position and this is a position that's going to get you separation. So the second tip is to make sure that we're outside the DB's frame, but inside of my frame. Frame. You guys don't want to step too far wide and have your head and your shoulders over here because that's when it turns into a reach. Everybody will be like, oh, you're stepping too wide. Oh, this, that, and the third. Well, look at guys like Jerry Judy. Look at guys like Stephon Diggs. You look, at, you look at all these guys. Antonio Brown's a great example. All these quick guys that have quick change of direction and they're very explosive. When they go to make that move, it's because their hips and their bodies are going with the cut that they're able to step that far. Guys who just reach out here, but their hips and their shoulders stay in this middle lane like I was talking about. Yeah, it's going to feel slow because you're reaching and you're you're not bringing your hip. You want to bring your entire body with the cut because that's where you get that explosion because you have to step out here to get that DB to move. Okay. So now the other thing is, fellas, is when I get this DB to jump, I got to take advantage of this. So I can't be cruising out of here. So many guys, I know this isn't really the focus of the second tip, but I want to make sure I include this is that when guys get a DB to jump, they love to just think, oh, I got him. And they just cruise. They'll just jog. And they're giving this guy time to react. We got to make sure that when I make him, when I get him to the outside, I got to leave him. I got to push off of that cut leg, use that explosion that I got from that cut and really for and really accelerate and win that race back to the ball because I don't want to give him time to speed turn and I don't want to give him time to recover. So the second tip that will always get you open, make sure that we're using those lanes off the line of scrimmage against press. I'm stepping outside of his frame, but inside of my frame to create as much separation as possible. Let's watch the thing full speed one more time. Great job throwing wide, getting him to jump, and then making sure we accelerate back over the middle. Okay, so now Third tip that I want to talk about here is restacking. So that's the third thing that's going to always, always get you open, especially against man coverage. Sometimes I'll even against maybe like a zone coverage look where you're able to get back over the top. Like maybe it's um maybe it's it maybe it's something where like it's a match too. Um, I don't know if you guys are too familiar with that term, but it's more like they, they have like an option, like if it's a corner to play cover two, but then like it turns into cover four if they're not threatened there. So that's like kind of a situation you can use against zone, but it's mainly used against man coverage, right? So it's watch this thing full speed. So when we come off here, you see Judy does such a great job of restacking and then able to throw that rocker step to get create to be able to create space, right? So the restack is super important because where's this DB supposed to be looking always? Hips, right? Hips and core. That's like the main spot. That's what they're taught. And um, that's what's going to be able to get us some separation because of the restack. No matter what we do, we have to constantly work to try to restack. But we got to have a plan if it doesn't work. So when Judy comes off the line here, he kind of gives him almost this like split release, kind of reads him and sees that this DB jumps to the outside. If, D if Judy, he's running a corner route, right? If he takes the outside release, this DB's already opened up there. He's going to be right on his hip and he's going to be forcing him straight to that sideline. If he's way opened up, I just want to react. Let's take the inside release. Let's work back to get back over the top. So the whole entire stem, he's working to get back over the top of this guy and make sure that we restack. Because when we restack, we should be able to do whatever we want with them. So when I go up here and I restack and I get him trailing my back hip and I'm actually going fast, I'm running in full speed. The thing is, is that where's he supposed to be watching? He's supposed to be watching my hips. So when I work this rocker step, which is essentially like that double up we just talked about, you want to step to the side that you're going first and then sell back to the inside. So I'm coming off here. I go step to the inside, throw back to the outside, and I actually sell with my head and my shoulders, right? And you see how he's throwing to the inside here. So make sure the sec or the third tip to always get open on your routes is when it's man coverage, let's do the best we can to make sure that I restack. I want to restack, get that guy on my back hip. So if he's here looking at my hips or if his eyes are high, undisciplined, I could really sell and I could really throw up my upper half and get him to jump to the inside because I'm selling a post. So make sure make sure that every time you guys are in man coverage, you want to restack. Now, one more thing I want to include is you got to have a plan though, because like a lot of people will be like, okay, well, I tried to restack, but he's over the top. What am I supposed to do if he's playing me over the top? I can't restack him. Does that mean the route's done? No, you got to have a plan for it. So if this DB plays this thing well, and he's over the top, what can you do? You could work a throw by, you can just break this thing off and slip back underneath him. If it's more of a flat route, like an out route, but a throw by technique, if he's playing this thing, like if you were to take an inside release, Let's say you were to take an inside release on an outside breaking 
route like a corner and this DB's playing it well up here and you're going hip to hip with them, a throw by works perfect, right? Let's say maybe he's doing it well. Let's say you got, let's say you're running a post and he's hip to hip with you. You work that little chicken wing, like chicken wing move where you lean into him with your outside arm and then you break it off to the post. You just got to make sure that you have a plan if the restack doesn't work out. Let's watch this thing again, full speed one more time. So again, to recap, right? Make sure that we're attacking leverage and making all my routes look the same. Make sure that we're stepping outside of a DB's frame, but inside of my frame. And then number three, make sure that we're always, always trying to restack, but we have a plan if it doesn't work out. Let's watch this thing full speed. Great job taking the inside release, working back over the top and throwing that head and shoulder fake to create some separation. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. I really appreciate it. I always appreciate the feedback. Helps me come up with new ideas for videos. So I definitely appreciate it. And also, fellas, Route Running Bible, over an hour and a half's worth of content specifically tailored to wide receivers over um, an, a 48 minute long video on just route running, how to improve your route running in 10 days. And then a 49 minute long video with 20 different press releases you can, you can learn and add them to your game. Drills to work on each one. And then the game situations to use those releases. Hope you guys could check that out soon. Very first link in the description. I'll see you guys next time.